Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. And in today's video, we're taking a look at the Ambernic RG35XX+. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Ambernic sent me this RG35XX Plus for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Taking a look inside the box, and one of the first things I see here is a 128GB microSD card. There's a set of wet and dry wipes for the screen protector, an instruction manual, which is worth checking out considering it's got the button combinations listed to do different things, a tempered glass screen protector. Now, I don't normally use these on my devices, but if you do, more power Power to you. There's also a USB-C cable. And last but definitely not least, the RG35XX Plus. From a specs perspective, this is a big upgrade over the existing RG35XX. We've got 1 gig of DDR4 RAM as opposed to 256 gigs of DDR3. It's also got a big upgrade in the processor department using an all-winner 8700. The battery is bigger in this one. It's 3300 milliamp hours as opposed to 2600. And on top of that, they've added in vibration, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. In addition to the 128 gigabyte microSD card that was included with mine, there's a 64 gigabyte microSD card used for the operating system. On the left side of the unit, we've got our volume switches. On the top of the unit, we have our mini HDMI out, as well as LED indicators. It is worth pointing out that this is a mini HDMI port. It won't fit a standard HDMI cable. You can see the differences. Here is a mini HDMI cable, and you can see it's much smaller than a regular HDMI. You can pick up mini HDMI to regular HDMI cables fairly cheap on Amazon. I think this is an Amazon Basics cable that I paid about nine bucks for. Or you can pick up an adapter, which are about seven bucks for a pair. On the bottom of this device, we have our USB-C port as well as a headphone jack. So here's the RG35XX Plus compared directly against the regular RG35XX. You can see they're very similar in terms of size and shape with some minor differences. The 35XX Plus has a slightly different D-pad. The speaker is in a slightly different location. And the screens appear to be slightly different. If you take a look at these things from a side profile perspective, you can see the RG35XX Plus is a little bit thicker. To me, it makes perfect sense considering the RG35XX Plus has a bigger battery and better specs overall. The top of the devices seem nearly identical, but it does appear there's a bit of extra support around the 35XX Plus's HDMI port. We've also got a big difference on the back here. The 35XX Plus has an easily removable and replaceable battery. And the 35XX Plus also has differently shaped L1, R1, and L2 and R2 buttons. To be honest with you, it took a bit to get used to the different buttons on the 35XX Plus, but at the same time here, I think they are a little bit more comfortable. It's not necessarily a game changer, but it is a little nice touch here. And I also noticed that the D-pad on the 35XX Plus was a lot more comfortable to use. Here's a close-up on the two D-pads. On the left, we've got the 35XX Plus, which has slightly more rounded corners, which is a much better feel, especially if you play fighting games. And here's the D-pad on the 35XX Plus compared with the D-pad on the Game Boy Color. You can see it's a little bit bigger. As for the face buttons though, they're a little bit smaller than the Game Boy Color, and I don't necessarily think this is a good or a bad thing. They're just different. From a thickness perspective, it's about the exact same, maybe just a little bit thinner than the bottom of a Game Boy Color. From the top perspective, it's also very comparable. So the 35XX Plus is a little shorter, but a little bit wider than the Game Boy Color. In my opinion, it gives a very similar overall feel with that Game Boy Color. So if you like the Game Boy Color, you're probably gonna like the 35XX Plus. For a quick comparison as well, here's the D-pad from the 8-bit DO SN30 Pro compared to the RG35XX Plus D-pad. The 8-bit DO has got a much bigger D-pad similar to the SNES D-pad and the buttons are obviously bigger as well. And here's the RG35XX Plus flanked by the RG353V and the older 35XX. If I had to choose one of these devices only, I would choose the RG35XX Plus with one big caveat that we'll get into in just a second. So I've got both micro SD cards plugged in and let's turn on the 35XX Plus. Here is the boot time for this handheld.
The main menu here is simple and straightforward, although I'm not the biggest fan of it. It could look a little flashier out of the box. The settings menu is also simple and straightforward, but it's worth pointing out that this is not the settings menu for your emulators. This is the settings menu for the device. And there is a reset button if you screw up anything on RetroArch. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I was just checking to see if it was a touchscreen, and it's not. Going into the game room section, and I've got two different options here. The external card, where there are some games, and also the built-in card, where, interestingly enough, there are also some included games. The 35XX Plus comes with a whole bunch of pre-installed emulators for a whole bunch of different systems. Some systems have a handful of games included, other systems have a whole lot of games included. For example, for the SNES here, there are a whole lot of games, and interestingly enough, a lot of them are NTSC. Pressing the menu button in game brings up a very simple menu. You can exit the game, load it, save it, restart it, change the video display effect, or change the backlight brightness. I also noticed that there's quite a bit of a bezel here by default with these emulators. I would argue they're not necessarily taking advantage of the hardware to its full extent. I mean, the screen here could be a little bit bigger. Now on devices like this where the buttons and D-pad aren't necessarily easily changeable or changeable at all, it's extremely important that they're good. And testing them out here, and they seem absolutely fine. I wouldn't necessarily say they're perfect and the best thing out there, but they are very good and very serviceable. To be fully transparent here, it took a little bit to get used to this D-pad. I do like the way it feels when I roll my thumb on it because the edges aren't necessarily sharp. And once I got used to it, I was able to get out pretty much everything I wanted without issue. However, when I switched from Super Nintendo to CPS2, which stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Capcom Play System 2, depending on how you want to interpret that, I noticed some glaring issues. These weren't necessarily issues with the controls themselves, but there were issues with the way they were configured in the first place. I'm hitting buttons here and not the right stuff is coming out. I'm trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. I'm thinking I'm hitting light punch, but instead I'm hitting heavy punch. I didn't know what was going on, and it turns out the controls were not configured correctly at all out of the box. In my opinion, this is a completely massive miss. I mean, you can see me hitting buttons here, and the resulting actions are not what I would have expected at all. The end user isn't going to be able to figure these ones out too quickly. The button mapping here doesn't make sense. So even just messing around, I'm not enjoying my time playing this emulator the way it's configured out of the box. And to not have something configured out of the box properly, to me, does not make any sense at all. Unfortunately, the configuration optimizations did not apply just to the controls. Taking a look at PSP here, and I was encountering some frame issues playing a whole bunch of different games. And that was really disappointing given the fact that this does have an H700. And while you can technically play N64, Dreamcast, and PlayStation games on this, your overall experience might not be the best because the hardware is limited. There is no built-in joystick. There are workarounds, but they're a little awkward. And while you can also play Nintendo DS games on this, again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because the workarounds are a little bit awkward. The hardware is limited in that regard. So let's get into what I like, what I don't like, and whether or not I'd recommend the Ambernic RG35XX Plus. And we'll start out with what I like. The first thing I like, and this one is huge, I like the upgraded specs when compared with the RG35XX. I like the much better CPU and GPU. I like the addition of more RAM here and faster RAM. One gig is opposed to 256 megs and we've got DDR4 versus DDR3. I like the bigger battery. I like the addition of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Secondly, I like the updates to the form factor. I like the more refined D-pad. I like the refined trigger buttons and their buttons. They're not analog triggers. Not that any of the games this would work with would support analog triggers. And I like that the battery is easily accessed here, easily replaced. Now shifting over into my dislikes, and I've got one here, one big one, and that's the implementation of the software on this. I don't like the operating system. I don't like how it was set up. I don't like how things were configured. And it's not a great experience out of the box, which is a massive detractor. It was the same issue I had with the RG35XX out of the box. When I installed Garlic OS on the RG35XX, it completely transformed that device. It transformed it into something that was just okay, into something that was truly amazing and one of my favorite handhelds. And Bernick, if you're watching this review, my advice to you is to pay someone like Black Seraph to create an operating system for you to work right out of the gate. Have things optimized right out of the gate. 
And that way the end user doesn't have to worry about configuring things and trying to set things up. Not all end users know how to do that. Not all end users will have the patience or the technical know-how to go through things and to configure things for each individual system. End users like things simple and straightforward, and that's really unfortunate with the RG35XX+. Plus. Now, before I get into my overall recommendation, let's take a look at the price. Right now, the RG35XX+, Plus is priced at $64. US As tested, I had the 128 gig micro SD card at 79 bucks. But taking a look at the base price here, 64 bucks. It's a $12 increase over the RG35XX, which isn't too bad at all. So priced at $64, would I recommend the Ambernic RG35XX Plus? And the answer here is yes, but. There are a few caveats. First and foremost, if you're looking at either purchasing the 35XX or the 35XX Plus and not doing anything, I would take the 35XX Plus all day, every day. However, if you are looking to configure and mod it, Right now, the 35XX has Garlic OS, which completely changes the device. I mean, if you gave me the choice here to take one of these devices on a road trip as it stands today, I'd be taking the older RG35XX. And that's because it's got Garlic OS, which completely optimizes the device and makes things a lot more enjoyable. I mean, when or rather if, because you can't guarantee anything, if Garlic OS is released for the 35XX Plus and fully optimized, it will be a much better experience and completely transform this device. And at 64 bucks, it'll be very hard to beat. And again, Ann Burnick, if you are watching this one, team up with the community. You have the potential here for a truly amazing handheld device, especially at this price point. You have the potential to have one of the best must-haves on the market. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to Ambernick for providing the RG35XX Plus for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state. <laughs>